speaking to my boss late at night whilst married. So my, F28, husband, M32, is terribly upset with me because I spent 30 plus min speaking to my boss, M44, after my work shift. I typically finish at 9 p.m., so it's very late and extremely rarely we catch up via phone on I'd say 90% work stuff and 10% life-related stuff. I'm usually really tired at this point and I'd much rather not have a phone call dot but he drags on the conversations and is the type of person that can bring up the same topics multiple times. I don't think my boss is very self-aware regarding the length of the conversations and just speaks about anything that comes to mind and I'm mostly passive, keeping a positive and what could potentially can be seen as an encouraging tone as well just to be polite and nice. My husband being in the background, hears all the conversation and keeps signaling to end it, whilst I'm obviously also trying to wrap it up. To my dismay it's just not working. My boss keeps bringing up new topics to speak about and I keep my answers polite and short. After I finally hang up I find myself in an argument with my husband whether these types of conversations are inappropriate or not because it's such a late time. I insist that just because my boss is a man, doesn't automatically turn the conversation to inappropriate necessarily and that this is so rare and something I wasn't comfortable with either. But not necessarily morally wrong because of my boss gender. My husband is outraged I don't see how being married and talking to another man at this hour is principally wrong. It's not the best timing but my shift is so late, 9 p.m., and whether my boss is a man or a woman sometimes that catch-up talk do take place. I understand that my boss shouldn't have dragged it on but is it morally wrong that I speak to him at this time because he's a man? We're not flirting or socializing. My husband is upset I lightly laughed a few times and were, encouraging, which is me not wanting to be rude since he isn't a bad person. He's just very shatty and is a bit aloof. Opinions? Edit. This call took my place on my way home and little bit once I've arrived home. I wasn't spending time with my husband already. The nature of my job requires my boss checking in afterwards. My husband clearly stated if my boss was a woman it would have been fine. Edit 2. Woke up to a lot of comments so I'll be responding to things have may not have addressed. A lot of people have questions about why I'm taking a call off hours and the nature of my job. It's a small new company that's coaches people in a certain sport. Sometimes afterwards I need to quickly update him regarding the range or any equipment, or if I have a fresh coaching question. Whilst coaching I can't reach out to him and ask him all these questions because it's few intense hours of active work. So it usually happens afterwards when I'm on my way home. Very rarely do we have call this long. Edit 3. My husband is not upset with the call itself. He is upset that I don't agree with him that it is inappropriate to chat to another man during such a late time. This is a massive deal to him. I am confused. Think I am hearing this was a one-time call and if so, your husband needs to chill. If it is regular then some other means of communication must be figured out, especially since you are hourly. Regular calls at that hour are intrusive to you and your husband. Must question the need for it. X. My boss doesn't call me at home. My boss doesn't call me at home after work hours. If my boss did so, I wouldn't answer my phone. If it's a dire emergency, and I didn't answer my phone, I think my boss would text me about the dire emergency and give me the bare essentials. Are you being paid to work while off the clock? If not, stop taking work calls while you're not at work. If your boss needs you he can compensate you. My, M24, GF, F23, wants to, restart, with no labels, and no exclusivity. My girlfriend and I have been dating for 5 years, since senior year of high school. We have had a great relationship together, or so I thought. Neither of us questioned the other's loyalty. We both have had immense love for one another. The situation I find myself in now begins w about two years ago, when I bought a ring and made her aware of my intentions to marry her. Unfortunately, I suffer from debilitating social anxiety, and a myriad of other mental health issues that really holds me back from getting what I want or deserve. I couldn't find the strength to talk to her dad about marriage, due to extreme anxiety. It's so stupid, I can't even talk to the employees at McDonald's when my order isn't fulfilled correctly. Anyways, for the last two years I've pushed it back and pushed it back, unintentionally hurting my girlfriend badly. She finally snapped and asked for a break. I immediately knew my mistake and rushed to fix it. I begged, cried, and even talked with her parents about marriage. They ecstatically said yes, not that it much matters anymore. She finally reached back out to me after a week and had an ultimatum. 
We could retry our relationship, starting over. She wants me to pursue her and win her back is what I gathered. I was okay with that part. Then came the part where my heart broke. She said we wouldn't be exclusive. I expressed my hurt and confusion. She explained that she didn't want to feel trapped. She wouldn't be actively seeking other people, nor did she think she would find other people. She said that we had five years together and that counts toward something and that she thinks we have a chance at getting back to normal. I'm insecure now. My mental health issues, which I've struggled with since before we began dating in high school, have a lot to do with my social skills, my charm, or my lack thereof, and my humor. My girlfriend is a very attractive girl and I have let myself go. I don't feel as if I can compete again the guy she sees in her everyday life. I'm so lost at the moment and am looking for any insight or wisdom anyone may have. Anything would help. Even a joke. I just want to know how this looks without the rose-tinted perspective. How should I proceed? Too long did not read. I didn't propose to girlfriend after promising over and over. Girlfriend snapped and asked for a break. When she came back said we needed to restart and be non-exclusive. I don't feel that I have the sexual prowess to compete with other prospects. That relationship is over my friend. Unfortunately my friend you have learned a very harsh lesson, that you need to work on yourself and your issues. That is what has led to this. In my opinion, you should value your mental health, and walk away. This whole deal would end up eating you alive. Walk away, go to therapy, work on yourself. Yay that's a death sentence in a relationship. TBH I'd tell her, no need for the non-exclusive bull and just walk away, you won't win her back. Take this time to reflect and work on you before you are ready to jump in another relationship. Learn from your mistakes. Your condition is hurting your quality of life. Please take the time to get help and heal as a single person. You both deserve to be happy but you both are simply incapable of making each other happy right now. My mom may have given me and my boyfriend an STD. I, 24M, am having a really tough time not blowing up and lashing out at my mom right now. This afternoon I put chapstick on before heading out to spend Halloween night with my boyfriend, 22M, and I notice that I'm getting a bump on my lip. I assume it's acne, or an ingrown hair, as those have happened to me before. I realize when I get home, after an entire night making out with my boyfriend and giving him oral sex, that I have a cold sore forming. I freaked out. Immediately started crying and not knowing what to do, because my boyfriend and I have been dating for only 5 months. My mom tells me casually that she has had a cold sore for the last week, and has been using my chapstick. I have no idea what to say to my boyfriend or how to bring this up. In fact, he is the first boyfriend I've had, and only person I've ever slept with. Thinking about possibly accidentally giving him both a cold sore and genital herpes has me sick to my stomach, literally. All because my mother disrespected my boundaries and borrowed something of mine without asking. I cannot imagine what my mother must have been thinking when she used my chapstick knowing that she had such a contagious virus. She doesn't even take herpes medication. I am livid. I've been throwing up and crying since I have gotten home and I don't know what to do. I am terrified that he may break up with me because of this. What do I do? We really need comprehensive sex ed in this country. This is HSV1. You would have initially had primary herpetic gingivostomatitis, lots of ulcers and sores in the mouth possibly as a child, before developing cold sores. Cold sores only develop after you've had the initial infection and the virus stays dormant in your trigeminal ganglion. The virus can become active and cold sores can pop up for various reasons including being immunocompromised, stressed and other environmental factors. It's unlikely that this is your first infection with HSV1 and is spread through saliva not sexual contact, I'm a dentist. Was it unreasonable to break up with someone because they lied about their age? I've been receiving some very mixed opinions on this and would really like some advice to see if I was acting out of line. I, 22 female, was in a relationship with a guy we will call Will. I met him when I was 19, and he told me he was 25. We were together without issue for almost three years, and although he worked constantly, I knew him as pretty easygoing and always up for a fun time. Just before we broke up, we attended a party together where I met all of his friends for the first time. It became clear that all of his friends were, proper, adults, with families, kids, their own houses and jobs, whereas I was still a student at the time. It came out that he had also been lying about his age, and had recently celebrated his 30th birthday. 
This was news to me, as he had been for dinner with my family not long prior and told them all he was in his twenties. The reason I had not met any of his friends before this was that I was still a teenager when we first met, and he was ashamed, embarrassed, whatever. I broke up with him not long after. I've been told that this was a crazy thing to do, and that it was unreasonable to break up with someone who lied about something as insignificant as two years of age. Ordinarily I wouldn't care, but I was a teenager when we met and he was a grown man in his thirties pretending to be in his mid-twenties so I wouldn't think he was too old. I'm not sure if lying to make yourself seem younger is a common thing amongst men in their thirties, but I keep hearing that it's a common insecurity and I shouldn't have taken it so seriously. Your whole relationship started with a lie. He kept the lie going. He lied to your family. It took three years to meet his friends because he was afraid the lie would be exposed. Some people may feel this lie is insignificant, but a lie is a lie is a lie. Not to mention trying to dupe a teenager. Who told you that? That's creepy as fuck to pretend to be younger than you are to attract teenagers. If he could lie about that, what the fuck else could he lie about? Not being able to trust a word that comes out of his mouth is a damn good reason to break up with someone and anyone telling you otherwise is just as shady as he is. Sue this dude hid you from his friends until you were an acceptable age simultaneously telling you he was younger so you wouldn't see the age gap as strange, then someone actually told you it wasn't a big deal? WTF.